Good day fellow investors. Lithium stocks have been hammered over last year as lithium prices fall, as lithium prices fell. And now that prices are low, everything is cheaper, now is the time to dig into the sector. Not a year, two years ago, when everybody was over the moon about lithium stocks. So we look at every company, at the sector, at the lithium demand and supply to give you an overview of when to strike and take advantage of the almost certain cyclical lithium opportunity that is arising. And immediately on the lithium supply and demand, I have looked at the top lithium producers and written down their expected growth in production by the following years. And the key here is that if you sum things up, you get to 2.5 million tons of lithium as supply over the next 3-4 years, on average 2027. However, when I compare that to Statista's expected demand for lithium, I get to 2.5 million tons for expected demand by 2030 compared to already supply hitting that number by 2027 by just the top 10 miners. Thus, over the next 3-4 years, given the high level of supply and lower demand, except for some miracles, it will look ugly for lithium miners. This doesn't mean we can't make money on it, but it means that it simply won't be as easy as some producers expected like Albemarle, where they said lithium prices will be 20,000 going forward. That's needed to cover for the huge growth in demand, but it will be choppier like it is normal for commodities. And even here, supply, they say 3 million tons compared to demand of 3.7 million here, but actual more conservative estimations are for 40% below Albemarle's expected demand. So there is a huge difference and this difference concludes into lithium prices that we'll discuss also in the forecast in a little bit, whether it will be 8,000 per ton or 20,000. Everything is driven off these prices, stock prices and investment returns. As everything depends on the price, we need to look into what can the price be going forward especially year by year. When you look at all other projections, those are all linear. What we need is understanding the supply and demand balance and then striking because it is never linear. If you look at Albemarle's presentation here, they expect linear 5x growth in demand by 2030. They have even increased the predictions by 15% at the end of 2023. Of course, too exuberant, but those linear projections are over too linear and just a small difference in growth between 18.1 and 19.6 comes out in a huge difference in the market, supply and demand balance, and then 8,000 or 20,000 price per lithium ton. That's a huge difference. I have even made some more exuberant estimations, differences, 20% growth going forward, 5 or 2.87, let's say in 2029, based on current prices. So one thing is certain, as here, Ego shows that over the next few years, we will have most likely lithium oversupply and then only by 2028, 2029, we will have a supply deficit. But this is exactly what I want to discuss here. This will create the opportunity to take advantage of this cycle. Because if you look a little bit here, you see that oversupply means very low prices. With commodities, the cure for high prices that we have seen over the last two years are high prices. Everyone invests in production, as we have seen, everyone is planning on growth. Thus, oversupply, prices are low. If prices are low for a year or two, few will invest in growth because they simply don't have the money. It's risky. You never know when will this cycle end. And then sooner or later, the cycle ends. 
and then prices shoot up again, which is the cycle opportunity. A little warning on this long-term supply deficit. You see here that everyone expects lithium demand to grow, but that it is limited supply and therefore a supply gap will open, lithium prices will shoot up like it has been the case over the last two years. However, let me just give you a different indication. As I have been investing in commodities for the last almost 10 years, and this is a presentation from Freeport Copper Miner from 2015. And you can see here their expectations of total copper consumption, demand going to 35 million metric tons in 2024, supply remaining flat or even going down by 2024. This is Wood Mackenzie, the same guys that estimate your lithium forecasts. This is from 2015. What has actually happened? Demand did grow, but not to 35. It came to 27. Mine supply did not stall. It grew to 24 plus recycling. And you now have a copper suffice in 2024 in place of the copper huge deficit that they forecasted here. Always take these estimations with a pinch of lithium because usually those are too exuberant compared to reality. And just we're talking about fingers, smash that like button please because it supports the channel. Now going on to lithium price forecasts. Lithium prices have really crashed from a very high level above 50, 60,000, depending on the contract, to the current 13,000. Also, spot domain prices have crashed. Those are now at 1,000 per ton, I think. And those were reaching almost 7,000 per ton just a year ago. This is absolute destruction for lithium producers, but there is something more important when it comes to pricing, and that is the cost curve. Miners will produce as long as they make cash when they mine their commodity. And in this case, if you look at the highest cost producer for 2028 expected, is at somewhere around 9,000. So prices went to 60,000, but the costs of these miners are relatively low. And then if demand is a little bit less than expected, those prices can go even lower. This is 2028. So with the huge amount of supply coming onto the market now, we could see these six, 7,000 prices for a little bit longer where only the highest cost producers are pushed out of production. Similarly for the lithium rock production, the costs of production are extremely low, 250, 400, 600, and only the top producers reach a thousand. Therefore, when you think about the pricing, this should be lower for longer, especially given the growth going forward. And producers predicted higher prices, but if I look at Goldman's prediction going forward, again, the prediction can only be linear, but look at lithium prices. Those are never linear, but they predict 11,000. This means that prices will go much lower and much higher. So this will be the final result. You buy here, you sell here, and you make some money in the cycle. But if we cut a little bit the exuberant expectations, prices won't be 20,000, on average 10,000 means that in bad times will be 8, in good times 15, and that is the cycle you want to take advantage of. Spoduman 700, good times around 1300. And there are many things that can impact lithium prices, recessions, EV demand, interest rates, tax benefits from governments, technology, mining investments etc that is all connected but that is all very very normal in a commodity cycle exuberance leads to high production investments low prices that then stop investments 
as demand grows, you eventually end up with a new cycle. Let's dig into the companies. Albemarle, the stock has crashed 60%. The market cap is now 15.6 billion, but the company is still executing on their plans of growth. They want to hit 3x growth by 2030. And now something that is very peculiar because Usually producers, miners never discuss their forecasts in money, but just in how much they produced. And Albemarle getting high on the high 2022-2023 prices, they said we are going to make this much money, this much profits going forward because of the huge productions we are going to have, the sales we are going to make on extremely high prices. Prices are not uh, 25,000 as they expected, but now are closer to 10,000 and that makes a big difference. Of course, the company is diversified. They have production Australia, Argentina, Chile. This is important, we'll discuss later for SQM. Not that important for Arbe Marle. But if they keep doing their things, they will be profitable in whatever environment because of their low cost. But when it comes to valuation, they won't be making this huge amounts of cash flows, but the costs are there. So they will likely make zero or one billion or likely zero in a bad oversupply situation. And therefore, it's hard to value them. However, there is value in the assets they have. And I think that you can consider buying this at the 7 to 10 billion market capitalization, which is more appropriate. Now, this is a video, this analysis report. There is a 70 page report. You can read this calmly on my research platform. Link in the description below. You can check the report. Also, check a little bit what I do on my research platform, the covered stocks. There are now four strong buys that I have. Remember, there is a 21-day money-back guarantee. Check it, see how the investing style fits you and whether it can add value to your investing over the long term. So the risk and reward with Alba Marlin now isn't that positive. I would wait. If it goes lower, then it is getting closer to a buy if it goes higher well that is cyclical investing and even if they reach two three billion on lower lithium prices market capitalization of 30 billion down the road it's just doubling your money in seven eight years which is not enough to justify a 50 percent decline here very important to look at with the projections here if we look at earnings per share estimates from wall street for albemarle Yes, you look at the averages and the averages go down and then again up. But look at the low, six. If they make six dollars per share in 2024 and 2025, the stock is extremely overpriced. Of course, if they hit 44 in a new exuberant cycle, then the stock is cheap. But I think Wall Street analysts will have to adjust this quickly. SQM, Chilean miner, and I looked at Seeking Alpha, and everyone has them as a strong buy, a buy, 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 buy. And uh, I don't think that they are seeing the elephant in the room there. Because, yes, it is a good diversified business. And, okay, there is a strong dividend yield that will likely be cut. There is not crazy growth and there is no crazy growth because you will see in a moment. Before that, I think that the revenues will get lower, but given their diversification and low cost, they will make around 1 billion. So, of course, I would prefer it at below 10 billion to say it's fairly valued, but okay. However, if we look at their agreements with the Chilean government, this was recently introduced a few years ago. If lithium prices go higher, 40% of what they make has to be given to the government. Then you say, okay, this is part one of the elephant in the room. Part two, they just had a memorandum of understanding with Codelco because their concessions expire in 2030. And Codelco owns the concessions from 2025 to 2060. And now the plan is that they will establish a new company that will be mostly owned by Codelco 
So SQM from 2030 is already at one half of what is worth now, and then at the mercy of the government and what the new will be giving them. Of course, 70% of operational profit of the business goes to taxes. So this is something that is simply too much for normal investors. Why should we invest there? I don't know why are people investing there likely because of the market cap. And then everyone thinks, oh, the market is thinking like that. But you should check the elephant in the room with SQM. It is extremely uncertain. Nobody knows what will happen in two years. Could be positive, could be not positive, but too big a risk for me. Arcadium Lithium, the previous Levant. Now, don't get scared. Levant didn't crash 70%. This is 2.40 of Levant shares so the market cap now is a billion shares around six seven billion for arcadium after the merger of levant and alchem they also plan 3x growth over the next years with all their projects there to look more about that just look at the video link in the description below or in the cards on this video, Levant, there is the discussion. The next one is Sigma, traded also on NASDAQ, but also in Canada. This is around 3 billion US dollars. The stock is down, but not yet as much as it should go down, and you will see why. So we have growth expected and nothing wrong with that. If you look at Forex in growth going forward, you look at how much money they made in just a quarter, then you think, okay, they will make a lot of money going forward. 4x this by quarters, 4x this by growth, and you have profits of around 400 million per year, which is not bad. Plus, if you look at their technical reports for their project, their growth and the cash flows there are staggering. Phase one, 1 billion per year for the first six years, Phase two and three, again, 2.5 billion high peak of cash flows, and the market cap is just 3 billion. But check deeper the technical report, and you will see that their estimated prices for Spodumene Rock is around 6,000 for the first five years, and then declining to 2,000. The reality now is as they start producing, prices will be around 1,000 if lower as those are now. Those have crashed from very high levels. And if you look at the sensitivity, the green line is spodumene price, 9 billion net present value with 6,000 spodumene prices. I think the average for the whole project is 4,000. 20% down, we are already at 7 billion. So that's 3.2 thousand. But if we go to 1,000, the value, the net present value is negative. So this is not an investment for longer term investors. Of course, there can be ups and downs, but those are not bets that I want to make. Now, a very interesting is Pilbara Minerals. And you can see that the stock is down, I think, just 14%, unlike all other lithium miners and market capitalization, 11 billion Australian dollars. What's that? seven eight billion us dollars they own the pilgangora mine in australia eight percent of lithium supply they plan to increase production to one million tons of spodumene so uh, doubling it almost from current situation and then going forward but still four thousand was the average price last year, the average price going forward is 1,000, which leaves us with a gross margin of 300 million, EBIT 250, net profit after tax 200 million, cash of 300 million. Of course, when they double the production, that will be 600 million US dollars. That's a billion Australian dollars almost. So it is not expensive. And that also explains why the stock isn't crashing as all the others and they have very very low production costs which means they will be profitable at whatever price out there and you can see here the growth going to 1000 tons per annum now what's my strategy with lithium i like this 
situations with low prices. On my research platform, we have bought, for example, Glencore here in September of 2020, and that did pretty, pretty well. And that's what I'm looking at the cost curve. When prices hit the cost curve, then it starts eliminating new production, it starts eliminating costly production, and then the cycle bottoms. Plus, we can follow the demand, how much are things growing? Tesla is not growing as it was growing earlier, so some subsidies have been cut. So globally, there might be a slower EV growth ahead, which means with the fixed growth by miners, prices could be much lower than expected, below cost, and that is something that I follow over time. I still have to write deep dives on my platform here. You can check it as I have said. Check my research platform for updates, for new analysis, and subscribe to this channel for more interesting stock market analysis.